Joseph Smith was a con man. He used to trick people to give him money to go on these gold digging expeditions. There were many sacred sites to the Native Americans, sometimes containing silver. Indeed, a lot of the time he was simply getting money off people and they're not actually searching for anything. Later on, he created the Mormons, the Latter-day Saints. But of course, he rewrote his history to suggest he found the gold plates that allowed him to write the Book of Mormon many years earlier. Many of his early supporters were excommunicated because they realised they saw him rewriting his own history as the prophet. They saw the way in which he could have opportunistic revelations from God and suddenly go, oh yes, he wants to marry the very young girl next door. They noticed this, and so they were excommunicated. They were kicked out of the organisation. Joseph Smith's cash cow. Now, what do contemporary Mormons think of this rewriting of history? They don't believe it. They believe that when he was a young man, in fact, nigh upon a child, he found golden plates, and it was only many years later that he translated them. So they actually believe this. They believe this propaganda, this nonsense. The ridiculous thing is that Smith was known to be a con man. There's evidence of it. He was convicted. He was found to be an actual fraudster. He also had links to organised crime and carried out criminal activity even when he was the head of the Mormon church in its adolescence. Smith was also a massive plagiarist. He copied most of his work from other books. Much of the Book of Mormon is copied directly from the Bible. Many of the rituals and ideas within the temple are plagiarised from Freemasonry. When the Book of Mormon was being recited and written down, the first so many pages were stolen. Martin Harris's wife took the pages and demanded that he reproduce them word for word, presumably if he had these seer stones, this kind of occult practice, and he had these golden plates from God then surely he should be able to do that. Instead, he claimed that he could not. He said that he could reproduce them from a very similar story written by another Latter-day Saint. So in other words, he couldn't reproduce them, but he had an excuse, and it's like, oh, the story is pretty much there, and as a result, over time, many people that knew him realised these discrepancies, the illogical nature of some of his work, and how he was basically a con man. This is also a reason why he kicked out a great many of the people who supported him early on. And those original founding members of Mormonism, the early members, became excommunicated as they disagreed with him over the years. So in summation, Mormonism was based on a series of lies by a known con man who kicked out the people who disagreed with him. And the worst people to ask about the facts of his life are the Mormons, who lie through their teeth, discard actual evidence for the history, and then of course claim that their evidence, which is basically stories written many years later, must be the ultimate truth, because they believe they're doing God's work, and they believe that people like us, people criticising them, are doing the work of the devil.